So I had a great question in one of my videos about proof of weak hands. I want to bring that up here. In this video, I started talking about proof of weak hands and some of the potential legal issues I could see or regulatory issues I could see um, them facing, as well as Zether and Lanio or Lina, whatever it's called. I actually see a lot of potential issues from the gaming space, the affiliate space, the business opportunity space, um, a, a lot of potential issues. And I was talking about one of the ways they could mitigate some of these issues is to try to steer clear from anything that, from industries that aren't necessary, basically. Like, I don't know that being in the gambling industry is necessary. So I said, hey, you know, getting away from the, you know, gambling type games is a, a bonus, I think, long term. And Broke on Crypto, which, by the way, Broke on Crypto, I want you to know that I absolutely appreciate you. I see you commenting on channels. You're active in the Discord. You are an active part of the community. You bring a lot to the community. So I just want to give you a, a big shout out. Thank you for being a subscriber. I think you're a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching my channels. I know you've commented on them before. Um, but he said, how would Team Just, the development team behind Proof of Weak Hands 3D, how would they increase volatility, volatility if they move away from gaming? Okay. This is just a proposed idea. I think this is absolutely revolutionary. I think it can change the freaking world in such a massive way. And I think what I'm looking at here just scratches the surface. But I don't know if most people who are looking at Proof of Weak Hands 3D right here, the smart contract, I don't know if they get it and I, I mean sometimes i'm like i mean do people realize how big this is like when people sell tokens and stuff i'm like man do they get this and then maybe they're selling tokens because they're looking for the fast money or whatever but i'm like i mean i am here because it is a very long shot but it is a very real shot that either this smart contract or this virtual deposit contract can transform the world or at least a contract like this so let me explain how this works if you don't know P3D is a cryptocurrency token. It's a cryptocurrency um, that's built on top of the Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum blockchain is very Ethereum is very similar to Bitcoin in the fact that it's a cryptocurrency with one big fundamental element, and that is that you can create DApps on the Ethereum blockchain. DApps are decentralized applications. So basically, you can create software programs that run on the Ethereum blockchain. And one of the software programs is the P3D smart contract token. So there's a software program that basically is a token, is a coin, is a token, is a cryptocurrency in its own right. It just happens to be built on the P3D smart contract. I'm sorry, P3D blockchain. And it's a smart contract. So what this software does is basically for every token that is bought or sold, think of it like an exchange fee or a broker's fee. There's a 10% fee. Just like if you were to go to the ATM and pull out money, you'd be charged a fee typically by your bank. Or if you sold a stock or something like that or bought a stock on an exchange, you would pay a fee. If you went to Coinbase and bought Bitcoin, you would pay a fee. Except instead of the fee going to some large corporation who's just getting rich and rich and rich of all your banking fees or all your brokerage fees, the fee is 10%. It's not 3%, 5%, or 2%. It's 10%. But that fee is distributed among all other token holders based on evenly based off everyone who's holding tokens. So think about that. that that's massive. So every time you buy... Proof of Weekend 3D or you sell or you transfer, there's a, a transaction fee or a brokerage fee or a commission or whatever. There's 10% of the, the ETH value gets distributed among everyone else and it's paid out in Ethereum, not in P3D tokens. And you can withdraw that Ethereum in real time. Now, mind you, there's not a company. This is important for, so you understand the value of this business model. There's not a company administrating this. This is part of a software program. So essentially that runs is decentralized and it's important that you understand what a decentralized program is, but it's totally decentralized. So there's no one individual or one company managing the smart contract. It's there and it runs all the time. That makes it very fair. And if it's a solid smart contract and it does appear to be extremely solid here with P3D, then that makes it very trustless. I mean, you don't have to trust an individual to make the right decision. Now, this isn't financial advice. 
This is just me responding to broken crypto. How else can they add volatility? When he says volatility, he's saying, how can, how can they do things to create this 10% fee? So let me just give you an example. Right now, they have a game. The game is FOMO Long, and it's also there's one called FOMO Quick. There's two versions of the same game. Inside of that game, whenever you play the game, you're buying and selling items in the game. Those buys and sales in the game basically create little transactions that send Ethereum back to P3D. So think of a casino game. That's what this stands for. This is a C. A casino game. A casino game oftentimes has a 1% edge built in. So imagine casino games, but that 1% edge, instead of going to the casino, it goes that 1% Ethereum goes back to the P3D contract and it's distributed. So he's saying, what else can create volatility? You need something other than just a great token for the sake of a token. There's no reason for people to buy it and sell it. There's no reason to add Ethereum to the contract. So they have a game now, which is a bit of a, a, a game of chance that involves money. It's a, zero sum, it's a zero sum financial game, which means there are winners and losers, basically, um, and they know it. Um, it's, it's part of a game. Now, FOMO 3D is very revolutionary, and I like it for the fact that it's very unique, but it's still an offshoot of the casino games. And I'm suggesting that they eventually, I understand why they may be a part of this space today. Um, I, I would hope they, I, I kind of hope they don't even go to casino games at all. I think that's a short term solution. Yes, it can add Ethereum to the contract. Absolutely. Um, I much more like the idea of their developed games, something that's unique, that's outside the box. Plus with these casino games, there can be a lot more volatility, which is good for the contract. Um, but it, it may not be good for the brand long term. But what they're struggling with right now is keeping interest in the P3D token while further development takes place. But back to broke on crypto, he said, what else could they do? If they did not do this and they didn't do this, and I'm, again, I'm okay with the gaming aspects, specifically the unique gaming aspects for now. Um, but I, I hope they get away from maybe the zero-sum aspect of the game. Gaming in general, I don't care if it stays a part of the platform. I just think the platform can be far bigger than that. And let me give you some example. One is um, crowdfunding. Think about this. Crowdfunding can be massive. So what if they, what if, think about Kickstarter. What if there was a way for them to set up a, you know, kind of a, a crowdfunding type platform where I got a new, I don't know, invention I'm going to sell, some widget for your iPhone I'm going to sell, and it's going to cost X amount of P3D tokens. Well, everyone would have to send P3D tokens. That creates a transaction. I hold those tokens. Now, this token is unique. It's very unique. There's... If someone gives someone, like if you go to Kickstarter and you just give someone money, that is a very one-dimensional process. They have money. So what? But if someone funded you, your company or your project with P3D tokens, there's a great, this temper, there's something phenomenal about P3D tokens. You can sell the tokens for immediate cash. You can sell it for Ethereum or whatever. You can sell it for immediate income. Or you can hold the token and earn rewards if you didn't need all the cash right now. You can reinvest those rewards to hold more tokens. You can take a cash stream from the tokens if you need to. And the tokens can appreciate in value. So there's, if someone just got straight dollars, straight currency, heck, it, that's just very linear. But if they got P3D tokens, they can still sell for currency today. They can hold a token for capital appreciation. And they have a, a stream of, of rewards coming off that token based off volatility. So they can hold the token there. Now, arguably the token can be very volatile, but I believe that the more, I actually believe the more different use cases for the token, the more people using the token, I actually think it would decrease price volatility, but price volatility is somewhat relative anyway. The smart contract is very unique in the fact that it's set up in such a way to help limit some of the price volatility anyway. And I think long term, the price volatility just goes up, which means that 
by that very nature, dividends go up in a couple of different ways. As token price goes up, dividends go up because you're going to get more dividends. But the value of those dividends also goes up because the price of the token is going up. I hope that makes sense. But it's, it's incredible. So let's look at this. Exchanges. So if you exchange, if they create an exchange, I think they're trying to work on something like this where you can exchange P3D for Bitcoin. You can exchange P3D for Ethereum directly. Every exchange is going to be creating a transaction. And therefore, there's more volatility. There's more Ethereum going into the contract. Here's another one. Marketplaces. This can be a marketplace for practically anything. I mean, you could be a P3D eBay. There are a lot of games out there that, you know, think of things like um, Counter-Strike and, you know, World of Warcraft. There's all these games out there where people sell accessories, in, you know, in-game accessories, but there's all these third-party sites where they do it. What if P3D has something like that? Every time you bought and sold something on the game, a smart contract can handle the transaction. So, again, it's trustless, and it throws Ethereum back to the contract. It keeps going. Here's a fascinating one. I thought about this one when I was making the graph. Peer-to-peer -peer lending. There's platforms out there like Prosper. There's platforms out there like Lending Club. Peer-to-peer -peer lending. Now, this would have some potential issues with it, but you could start out with, you could offer a really high interest rate and it could be done through the blockchain and it could be based off the Ethereum This is address. This is just an idea. I'm not telling you this is perfect. I obviously realize people can create additional Ethereum addresses, um, but you know, maybe there's a really bad credit or I don't know, maybe this is just a bad credit score or bad, you know, score, however it's determined on new addresses. But anyway, the point being with the peer to peer lending platform is very similar to the crowdfunding. I mean, yeah, the crowdfunding platform, you basically you fund them. You have the money. You can cash in the tokens right away, which, by the way, transferring the tokens is going to create the, the peer to peer lend. That's going to create a transaction. If someone when they cash the tokens or they sell the tokens back, that creates a transaction. Again, all this is volatility. And this is an idea. I mean, the cool thing about this idea is you could kind of track payments. There's a, there could be a way to create, I think there could be a way to, to with a smart contract to, to create payments and to know if someone's making their payments within a reasonable time period or whatever, whatever. I think that could be done with a smart contract. Here's another one. Imagine a company funding purchase orders. There's all these loans out there where companies can fund purchase orders for cash flows. Again, what if they use P3D tokens for that? They have all of these, specifically the, the um, crowdfunding, purchase orders, peer-to-peer -peer lending. One I didn't put in here was charities, fundraising for charities. You Instead of giving the actual dollar amounts, give a similar amount in P3D. They can sell the tokens right away. They can hold on to them for potential appreciation. They can hold on to them for potential dividends. And even if they, even if you give the tokens and they sell them right away, it creates movement. It creates volatility. Chances are some of these people, some corporations, some organizations will start holding on to the P3D tokens. It diversifies their holdings. It makes them financially strong. It's like a high interest yield Savings account. Now, here's the thing. I don't know what's going to look. This is going to look like long term. This contract is still really new, but I don't know if you know this or not. It's currently paying out. Again, this is a smart contract. This is not a company. This is totally transparent. You can see this. This isn't financial advice either, but this is what I've learned. It's currently paying out since the, its inception about 0.5% a day. I haven't calculated it today. I think it's higher than what it was yesterday. I think yesterday was 0.46%. 0.5%, half percent a day. You can't get that kind of return in any sort of traditional market. And the only reason you're able to do it is because every buy, every sell that's created, every transaction through lending money and then you know cashing it in or you know buying something on something like an eBay marketplace, all of that, all of that is creating 10% fees. Here's another one, just typical business transaction. Any business could accept P3D tokens. In fact, I'd love to know how to do it in my business. Any business could accept P3D tokens. I'm a holder in the P3D marketplace. I want to see it go well. I'd love to see people pay me with P3D tokens. I would just hold on to the tokens. And my goods and services, you know, with whatever business you have, you know, if you have a product for, I don't know, $5 and you sell it for $10 and someone buys it from you for $10, yes, you made $5 in profit, but you also got those P3D at 50% less than what it would have cost you to go out there and get it. 
So any business transaction, if we could set up some sort of merchant client gateway, I don't know what that would be, what that would look like. But what if it could be done directly on the blockchain? I mean, I, I think there's some benefits to that potentially to discuss. And, and this could go on and on and on. And I'm certain there are other people who are more creative than I am. Think about them. Here's another one. Oh, I just thought of this one. Think of these outsourcing websites. This can be applied to almost any business because there's three methods of payment with one transaction. One transaction gives you the ability to cash in now for income. One transaction gives you the ability to earn potential dividends. One transaction gives you the ability to earn from capital appreciation. All of those are incredible. So imagine outsourcing websites. What if you paid the outsourcer from P3D token? The problem with outsourcers is they're always looking for the next gig, the next gig, the next gig. What if they could hold back part of the tokens? You paid them $100 for a gig, they kept five or $10 back in P3D tokens. And what if they were able to do that in every single gig? After a while, they have some consistent revenue coming in from the P3D tokens. The 0.5% isn't a day. Some days it's like 0.1%. I mean, it all depends on the volatility. But other days it can be 1%, 1.5%, 2% based on the volatility in the contract. So it's a way for, it can be a way for an outsourcer, for example, to be able to even out some of the bumps in their projects. So when you say what else can add volatility outside of gaming, practically anything else, anything else can be added. And the cool thing about P3D you know, I had a buddy of mine, he said, why would a company want to use P3D? Because as it would be based on the size of the community. As the community grows, the community members, the P3D holders, have a vested interest to see projects succeed using P3D directly or indirectly. When we say P, P3D is short for proof of weak hands 3D. So the any business just about, if there was like a, a merchant list, Every new merchant who got on that merchant list, P3D holders would see that. Everyone else is going to look at it. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like some sort of high-level networking. There's a lot of P3D holders that would want to be able to support merchants that were taking transactions in P3D. Why? Because it's beneficial to them as holders. They're earning revenue. They're bought in. They're bought into the concept. They're bought into the idea. And coincidentally, they're going to be bought into merchants who also they're going to be there's going to be some loyalty. They're at least going to want to give a merchant a shot because they're buying into this as well. And so you've already got a huge community, and right now it's not really huge, but it's growing all the time. Imagine having a massive community. To one day we got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people holding P3D tokens. Eventually, millions of people holding P3D tokens. Then the moment that you are a new merchant or you have a new business that interacts with the P3D token, automatically you're going to have a ton of new potential clients paying attention to what you have, taking a look at what you've got, what your company is, your product, your service. What do your company do? And long term, I even see it going further. I see this as being a form of insurance because I could see holding the P3D token Someone's going to say, yeah, but the token can go down in value. I get that. But the more there are using the token, the more volatility the token is, the higher price the token is going to be. And when that happens, there's going to be some stability. I believe the price is going to stabilize a little bit. Now, people think, how can the price stabilize? And you still, you know, be seeing similar returns because it's about volume of transactions, not price movement. If you, have, if you have just a few transactions, then it's easy for the price to jump a lot. But you can have a lot of transactions basically going back and forth, canceling each other out. Ten times the transactions, and it can stay just like this. Or it can go up like this or down like this. But it doesn't have to be so wild and so erratic, uh, potentially. And I think when you see a, a little bit more of a, stabled, a stable coin because you know, a lot of the volatility... I think that you could see either full or in part, think of things like insurance plans or retirement, where you start holding P3D. And I mean, there are people who are already claiming to do this. There are people in the Discord claiming to hold P3D just for future, you know, just for earnings. And, you know, some of them claim to live off of it. I think that's a little bit, if they're doing that, I think it's a little bit naive at this point. I mean, the project needs to really prove itself before you start cashing checks on it for the rest of your life. But, um, you know, to each his own. 
Think of, you know, education fund for the kids. I One person in Discord I already heard said that he's bought P3D tokens for his kid, for his grandkids. Um, I think that's interesting. You know, P3D tokens aren't even 20 bucks. Buy a few for the grandkids. Who knows what happens? If nothing happens, so be it. But this could revolutionize business. We've never seen anything like this virtual deposit contract. And I see it more as a virtual deposit smart contract than anything. I see companies and businesses seeing a value in just holding on to the token, at least in part. You know, I don't think, you know, I don't think everybody's going to sell the token. I think there's a huge benefit to holding on to the token. It's because of this magical, and I mean magical, 10% transaction fee that's allowed us at this point, since the inception of the contract, it's been way up and way down. And we're currently on, on, on the, you know, we've been as low as 4,000, 4,500 Ethereum in the contract. Currently, we're at, we're in the high 50s in the contract, but it's been as high as 80. So there's been a lot of movement in this contract, but it's still relatively new. I think long-term, some of that can stabilize and, and maybe it doesn't need to stabilize. Who cares? It, who cares the price of the token if it's kicking off enough daily rewards or weekly rewards or monthly rewards? So I see this could all add volatility to P3D. And potentially, P3D could be a, a brand new decentralized form of insurance or a retirement plan or an education plan. Basically, all rolled into one or some version of it. And, and those are my thoughts. So I think some of this stuff can be crowdfunding platforms. Some of this stuff could be implemented very quickly. The challenge is the reason gaming is so interesting and so sexy is because it's basically uh, constant volume. Like the gaming gaming can be addictive and and. and and in nature, and people want to play and be a part of it. They don't want to stop. But that's also the same thing that could bring about its demise. You know, people, you know, governments and regulatory agencies like to protect people against themselves. So if there's, you know, a lot of bad stories about people hurting themselves, I see people saying, oh, I want to see FOMO Long get to like 10 million and I want to see, I want to see there to be a winner. And then I want to see it get, you know, mainstream media attention. Yeah, the moment that there's a winner and there's mainstream media attention, it also means that there's equal losers. And the media is going to focus, the media never focuses on the positive side. They always focus on the negative. So they're going to focus on the people who was competing in FOMO and they lost, you know, $100,000 or more or whatever, you know. Then that's the ones that, that the media is going to naturally focus on. So I don't necessarily know, you know, how this all shakes up long term. But I do know that there are some mega use cases potentially long term. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know this was a long one, and I want to thank Broke on Crypto for making me, um, for giving me the the question that caused me to want to create this video because I've actually been thinking about doing a video like this for a very, very long time and going in more in depth uh, with this video. One thing I didn't mention, by the way, I got to say this real quick: the developers are already created, if they haven't already created, um, a kit where any third party use can create any of these utilities or anything that their brain can think of. And that is incredible. Now you could have potentially people all over the world creating utilities that could be benefiting the P3D smart contract, adding volatility to the P3D smart contract. Thank you so much for watching my video. I appreciate the fact that you took time. If you made it this far, I appreciate the fact that you took the time to do that. Thank you so much. Have an incredible day.